game music. I like to jam. He's a con impersonating a cop. Believe that. That's my partner. Now, the streets are safer. Put your hands on the pavement. There is no pavement. Well, then put them on the oodles or noodles. Chicken or beef. The cops are cooler. Believe that. <laughs> and the busts I'm a cop. are bigger. Damn. Blue Street. Sneak preview September 11. Open September 17. Squad, step aside. Nintendo brings you new players' choice titles for $49.99. And N64 for $139.99. You can get million sellers like Zelda, 1080, Yoshi, Banjo, Kazooie, and Rogue Squadron. With deals like these, you can play till it hurts. Thank you for shopping, Nintendo. Extra with the big beef patty. Hey, the whole meal's just three ninety nine. hits the Big Apple for some Grand Slam excitement. Catch the action of U.S. Open Tennis daily on TSN. This is the day you have trained for. The day you have studied for. Utilize your superior skills. Your superior intelligence. Sit down, Rodin. Oops. Sarah, baby. Oh, you were one. Wow. Don't make me hurt you. Learn to defeat your ruthless enemy, Steve of Hackensack. Ryan, you're gonna get rude. Shut up, quadruped. Sega Dreamcast. It's thinking. Hey, guys. Listen, your sweethearts. Call them. Collect. <laughs> Collect calls cost a fortune in Canada. Five bucks for five minutes. Now there's a new way to call Collect in Canada that's 44% cheaper. Instead of dialing zero, you just dial 1-800. Hi, it's me. On the number. And no contracts to sign. Hi, it's me. And look at all the money you're saving. 1-800. Hi, it's me. It's the cheapest way to call Collect. Buys on me. <laughs> tomato ketchup doesn't mean to keep you waiting. It's not trying to be rude. But let's face it. It is rude. Heinz tomato ketchup. The rude ketchup. Sweethearts. Call them, collect. 
collect calls cost a fortune in Canada? Five bucks for five minutes! Now there's a new way to call collect in Canada that's 44% cheaper. Instead of dialing zero, you just dial 1-800. Hi, it's me. on the number. And no contracts to sign. Hi, it's me. And look at all the money you're saving. 1-800. Hi, it's me. It's the cheapest way to call collect. Buys on me. <laughs> Larry Walker and his big bat step back into the Big O to take on the Expos. Rockies versus Expos, TSN, Monday. Hey, soccer fans, your weekend kicks off right here this Saturday on TSN. Get the best from the pitch as host Graham Leggett brings all the week's events from around the world. TSN World of Soccer, Saturday on TSN. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to TSN Tonight. I'm Darren Detition. Let us bring you up today in the American League's wild card race. The Toronto Blue Jays entered play on Wednesday evening, five games back of the Boston Red Sox as they continue their series with the Minnesota Twins. Calvo Mescobar back in the starting rotation. He replaces Chris Carpenter. Early on, Torrey Hunter goes down swinging. Just four hits through seven for uh, Escobar. Bottom of the seventh. Jays with runners in second and third. Tony Fernandez hits one to second. Vernon Wells scores. It's one up in Toronto. Later, Pat Borders makes his return to the Blue Jays, a big one. He homers to left. That makes it four to nothing in favor of the Jays. Bergosi likes that. Borders even taking a little curtain call. Jays go on to win it by a score of four to nothing. That is the good news. The bad news for them, though, the Boston Red Sox also win tonight, as do the Oakland Athletics. The A's are two back. Blue Jays remain five back. The desk in an hour. We'll see you then. Cheers to Friday night. When is your body no longer your own? You think I did this? When is your mind beyond your control? Frankie! There is no scientific explanation. When is your soul... This is a warning. I can't escape this. Lost forever. Who are you? Il messaggero non è importante. I just want my life back. Stigmata. <laughs> Starts Friday, September 10th. Whether through injury, accident, close call, or just plain strange goings-on, Canadians have been at the heart of some of the most intriguing sports stories of the century. From the Silken Lauman story to the brawl of the ball of the 72 Summit Series, we witnessed some heart-tugging upsets, comebacks, and strange occurrences. On the next 100 years of Canadian sports, you'll get just that. Upsets, comebacks, and strange occurrences. September 10th on TSN. Larry Walker and his big bat step back into the Big O to take on the Expos. Rockies versus Expos, TSN, Monday. Got any music? I like to jam. <laughs> He's a con impersonating a cop. Believe that. That's my partner. Now, the streets are safer. Put your hands on the pavement. There is no pavement. Well, then put them on the oodles or noodles. Chicken or beef. The cops are cooler. Believe that. <laughs> and the busts I'm a cop. are bigger. Damn. Blue Street. Sneak preview September 11th. Open September 17th. This is the day you have trained for. The day you have studied for. Utilize your superior skills. Your superior intelligence. Sit down, Rodin. Oh, Sarah, baby. Oh, you were one. Wow. Don't make me hurt you. Learn to defeat your ruthless enemy, Steve of Hackensack. Ryan, you're going to get rude. Shut up, quadruped. My day starts here, but who knows when it'll end. That's why I use new Speedstick Ultimate Deodorant. It's formulated to give you antibacterial protection that kills odor. For tough 24-hour protection. As your engine revs higher, the oil inside creates a protective wedge that builds up and keeps engine parts separated. But as your oil's viscosity breaks down, so can the wedge. That's why there's Castrol GTX, the only leading 10W30 that provides maximum protection against both viscosity and thermal breakdown. Because if your oil breaks down, what's next? Castrol GTX. Drive hard. And dry Castrol Syntec Blend for added synthetic protection. The J 
Jays are at home for a four-game standoff against the Twins. Canada's premier golf sports TV magazine keeps giving you the goods on golf. Our team helps you get more from the game you love. Join us weekends for Acura World of Golf. See it. Live it. TSN. Canada's new premier event. It will rival other great tours, but it will hold its own. The Trans-Canada Cycling Tour. Coverage begins Friday on TSN. Volvo S70. BMW 323i. Don't try this with any other heavy-duty hand cleaner. Only new Castrol Super Clean Hand Cleaner removes dirt and grease without water and without towels. Maybe those other cleaners should throw in the towel. <coughs> new Super Clean Hand Cleaner. This is the day you have trained for. The day you have studied for. Utilize your superior skills. Your superior intelligence. Sit down, Rodin. Oops. Sarah, baby! Oh, you were one fly. Don't make me hurt you. Learn to defeat your ruthless enemy, Steve of Hackensack. Ryan, you're gonna get rude. Shut up, quadruped. Sega Dreamcast. It's thinking. <laughs> The Fresh Maker. What stands between you and your goal? Will you give into it? Or fight through it? Will you fear it? Or embrace it? Will you hold back? Or hold nothing back? When you need that little something extra, will it be there? Gatorade helps provide energy to working muscles. Is it in you? When you're looking for more than the score. December's been great. All the guy does. It's going to be in the game forever. And searching for a little extra. I thought my life was over. Again, you know, like I said, I've made mistakes. You don't get in unless your family has money. Join the team of John Wells and company and travel the extra mile into the world of sports. You don't coming back. Sports Desk Extra returns Sunday, September 12th on TSN. WCW Wrestling on TSN is brought to you by Castrol GTX. Drive hard. They've done it. They've done, gone, and done it. Now there's a slicker, thicker, more hip, more hop, more happening new TV guide. Check it out. Viewing by the day, editor's picks of the week, even a weekly family viewing column. Couldn't leave well enough alone. I don't know how they've done it, but they've done, gone, and done it. And the cover stays put. Perfect binding. The new TV guide. I can love again. <clears throat> Don't try this with any other heavy-duty hand cleaner. Only new Castrol Super Clean Hand Cleaner removes dirt and grease without water and without towels. Maybe those other cleaners should throw in the towel. <coughs> new Super Clean Hand Cleaner. My day starts here, but who knows when it'll end. That's why I use new Speed Stick Ultimate Deodorant. It's formulated to give you antibacterial protection that kills odor for tough. 24-hour protection. When terrorists tried to steal the world's deadliest weapon, the government put out a call of distress. Alert 75th Rangers. Unfortunately. Andy's ice cream. They answer. Give it to me now or you'll be dead within five minutes. It's for you. This law, get ready to chill. You hijacked me with an empty gun? Yeah. When this is all over, I'm going to get you. Cuba Gooding Jr., Skeet Ulrich, Chill Factor. Are you crazy? Now playing at a theater near you. This is the day you have trained for. The day you have studied for. Utilize your superior skills. Your superior intelligence. Sit down, Rodin. Oops. Sarah, baby. Oh, you were one fly. Don't make me hurt you. Learn to defeat your ruthless enemy, Steve of Hackensack. 
Brian, you're gonna get root. Shut up, quadruped. Sega Dreamcast. It's thinking. Larry Walker and his big bat step back into the big O to take on the Expos. Rockies versus Expos, TSN, Monday. Today's program is sponsored in Canada by 1-800-HI-IT'S-ME, the cheapest way to call collect. TSN Pacific Prime. into the Blue Jays lineup in style. The Red Sox were diving towards victory against the Royals. Big Mac adds to his home run total, and a decision is made in the umpire affair. Chances of the umpires getting their jobs back are nil, less wood or two by an arbitrator. The NHL approves Mario's plan to buy the Penguins, and it's that time of year again as NHL players hit the ice and each other. The Swiss miss mystifies her opponent of the U.S. Open. The pain is in pain. We get you set for the Air Canada Championship, and the Lions hope Drummond will lead them to victory over the Owls on Thursday night. Show us a sign. It's thumbs up. The desk is coming up next. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of The Desk. I'm Darren Detition in Toronto, along with Dave Randorf in Vancouver. We are glad you tuned in. And we're going to start with some more bad news for the Toronto Blue Jays. Dutch, this has really been a season that's taken a drastic turn for the worse. Yeah, it's been up and down all year long. You know, it seems like an eternity ago that Tony Fernandez was flirting with 400 and Jim Fergosi was fighting in Philadelphia. Those were the good old days for the Blue Jays. They won their way into the wild card race and appeared to be making a serious run of the postseason. But oh, how times have changed. And here's the latest. On Tuesday night, Joey Hamilton was soft tossing him into the Twins because of his shoulder and and now he's out, too, for the remainder of the season. They have uh, have shut me down for the rest of the season. And uh, I'm going to uh, fly home Friday, spend a couple days at the house, and um, drive over to Birmingham on Wednesday, see Dr. Andrews, and uh, depending on what he says, maybe, uh, maybe have uh, uh, some sort of uh, exploratory scope Thursday. So Hamilton's gone, and Chris Carpenter is nursing a sore elbow. That means Calvin Escobar gets his first start in three weeks. Escobar getting some solid D. Two out, runner in scoring position. Terry Steinbach pops one foul. Tony Batista on the run who says he's got no range. Bottom of the sixth, Eric Milton pitching a gem. Facing Shannon Stewart, he goes down swinging. 17 in a row retired, just one hit by the Jays. Escobar not to be outdone. Torrey Hunter strikes out to end the inning, just four hits through seven. Bottom of the seven, Jays finally get it going. Tony Fernandez with a grounder. Vernon Wells goes on contact. He beats out Denny Hawkins' throw. It's 1-0 in Toronto. Still in the seven, two nothing now. Eric Milton thinks he catches Pat Borders looking, but he doesn't get the call. Derwood Merrill missed that one. Same at bat. Borders makes him pay. He hammers it to left. Four nothing Toronto. Fergosi likes it. Borders even takes a curtain call. Welcome back. Blue Jays go on to win it by a score of four to nothing. Pat Borders with the home run. That was his first since September the 11th, 1997. He was a little bit due. Tom Kelly was ejected after Borders' home run for arguing balls and strikes. It's only his fourth ejection in 14 years as a big league manager. He had a pretty good case there as well. Hey, and make sure you stay tuned to the Sports Network on Thursday. The Toronto Blue Jays wrap up their seven-game homestand. We've got the finale of their four-gamer against the Twins starting at 7 o'clock Eastern time. That's 4 o'clock Pacific time. In the meantime, the team setting the pace in that wild-card race is hot. The Boston Red Sox came into Wednesday night on a five-game win streak. 
The only bad news in Beantown right now is third baseman John Valentin going on the 15-day DL with tendonitis in his left knee. But maybe the time off will do him some good because Valentin was hitting just 122 over the last 12 games. Kent Merker was on the hill for Boston on Wednesday, the former card looking for his first win and getting help from his new D early, top of two. Joe Vicciello with the liner into the gap, but look at the great catch there by Damon Buford. Nice play. Next inning, Johnny Damon down the line, and check out the bounce off the wall. You think Nomar's played a couple of games in Fenway, knows all the angles? Yeah, that is a great play by Nomar Garcia Parra, and he comes through with the bats in the next inning as he singles off Jose Rosado to center. A run comes in to score, makes it 2-0 Boston, and the Red Sox add to that lead in the fourth. Wilton Vera with a single through the left side. Damon's going to bobble it a little bit out there on left. Two more runs score, 4 nothing. The Royals made it 4-3, though. So there's Rod Beck. Came over from the Chicago Cubs, and this is exactly what they brought the man in to do. Shut down tight ball games, and that's exactly what the veteran did. He gets his first save as a Boston Red Sox player. 4-3 is the final. The Red Sox win their sixth in a row for the first time since a seven-game streak back in April of 1998. And so the pressure was on Oakland. They continued their series against the Yankees. Daryl Strawberry is back. Insert your own joke there. Top of four, Yank starter. Roger Clemens in a jam. A's with the bases loaded. Those Oakland bats always seem to capitalize. At least they have been this year. Ben Grieve doubles down the left field line. Two runs coming to score. A's take a 2 nothing lead. Top of six, Grieve comes up again. Another pair on. He goes up the middle. That cashes both. Oakland leads it four to nothing. We go to the seventh. Four to one for the green and gold. Randy Villardi drives one to left center field. Ricky Lede going to the wall. But he pooches it. Run scores. That makes it 5-1. The final. The A's pound the Yankees in the Bronx. 7-1. Omar Oliveras remains undefeated as a member of the Athletics. He earns his fourth complete game of the season. And Clemens is now 0-2 in his last three starts against the A's this season, allowing 13 runs in nine and two-third innings. And so it remains status quo in the wild card race. Boston, two games up on Oakland. The Toronto Blue Jays, five games back. All three teams will play on Thursday as they wrap up their respective series. This probably more than anything else defines this year's home run race, at least to this point. Tuesday night in San Diego, Sammy Sosa hit his 55th home run. The fan who caught the ball, he did not savor his newfound treasure. Instead, he threw the ball back onto the field. It just isn't the same, at least not yet. Now Sosa leads it off for the Cubs in the top of the second inning. The fans calling for number 56. Could Sosa deliver? Sterling Hitchcock. It's ball four for the walk, much to the dislike of the Padre fans. Steve Traxel not in his usual form. He gets Tony Gwynn looking. Fourth inning, Sosa pounds Hitchcock to the deepest part of the park. He rides that fastball for home run number 56 in the season. That made it one to nothing, Chicago. That is your final in San Diego. Steve Traxel earns his first win since August the 4th and avoids falling closer to the 20-loss plateau. I said he wasn't pitching like Steve Traxel. He certainly wasn't. He was outstanding. Sammy Sosa, it's his 13th home run in his last 18 games. Here we go again. No kidding. So how about the Marlins and the Cardinals? Bottom of the first after a single and two walks. The bases are loaded with none out for Ray Langford against the BC boy, Ryan Dempster. And uh, Dempster still can't find the plate. There's another walk. Scores one, make it one nothing. And old Ryan Dempster isn't out of it yet. It's now 2 nothing. Bases still loaded. That one's going deep, but Mark Hotze jumps up and makes a great grab to get him out of the little bit of trouble. And after that, Dempster settles in. Big Mac goes down swinging at a high. Heater. Two nothing cards after three, but you know McGuire is going to get a little revenge. There it goes. His 52nd, a moonshot to left center, trying to catch up to Sammy Sosa. Breaking out of a bitter homer drought to, for Big Mac as well. He hit hit one in 25 at bats. The cards win it, by the way. 9 3 is your final. Ryan Dempster from Seashells that takes the loss. He's now 6 and 7. So here's the updated home run board. Both Sosa and McGuire go deep. On Wednesday night, Maguire sitting there with 52, Sosa with 56, on pace for 69. Who would have thought that Big Mac's 70 would be in danger only a year later?
Well, the umpires played hardball with Major League Baseball and lost. On Wednesday, MLB agreed to cough up $1.42 million in postseason bonus payments for the umps, along with full pay and benefits for the remainder of this season. In exchange, the union drops its wrongful dismissal lawsuit against baseball, and they lose the jobs of 22 veteran umpires who handed in their resignations last month in a failed attempt to jumpstart early talks for a new labor agreement. The agreement in principle is as follows. The union withdrew the lawsuit in federal court today with prejudice. The union will withdraw its unfair labor practices with the National Labor Relations Board. The 22 resignations that were accepted will stand. Those umpires who resigned their employment and no longer had a job with the leagues will not work for the leagues after the games tonight. As compassion and in as advance of the termination pay that might otherwise be due to the umpires who had resigned, the leagues agreed to pay them for one additional month as an advance on that termination pay. Chances of the umpires getting their jobs back are nil unless ordered to by an arbitrator. We came to, to the court in Philadelphia with our primary goal to maintain the employment status of the 22 umpires throughout the balance, balance of this contract. We've achieved that. They will maintain uh, their salary, uh, their health benefits, their insurance benefits, and all their benefits uh, that are due to them under the collective bargaining agreement throughout the course of that entire agreement. But they will not be on the field. They will not be on the field. The resignation strategy was a good strategy. The reason we're in this position is because of our own people who dissented against the union because they were led to believe other thoughts by Major League Baseball. If we stuck together as a union like anything else, we would have been fine. I don't accept baseball except my resignation until they can give me a reason why they pulled me off the field. I continue to work. Now, as you heard there, there is still hope for the umpires to get reinstated. Wednesday's decision will go to an arbitrator. However, that process will take several months, which means the 22 umps are out of work for the remainder of this season, at least. It's a real hot issue in baseball right now, just the type of subject they love to talk about on Off the Record with Michael Landsberg. Thursday, one of Michael's guests will be Derwin Merrill, an ump who's been very outspoken over the years. Don't miss it. Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern, right here on TSN. Straight ahead on the desk, Marcus Naslin headlines off-season signings in the NHL on Wednesday. Well, Mario Lemieux is walking tall after the NHL Board of Governors gives him the thumbs up. And the Swiss Miss is all smiles at the U.S. Open highlights are next. Steering so precise. We're still trying to find a word even more precise than precise. Intrigue. With state-of-the-art steering and suspension systems. Intrigue. By Oldsmobile. Start to command performance. Start something. My day starts here, but who knows when it'll end. That's why I use new Speedstick Ultimate deodorant. It's formulated to give you antibacterial protection that kills odor for tough 24-hour protection. Bases loaded, two out, bottom of the ninth, the winning run at third base. Here comes... The Jays wrap up a four-gamer against the Twins. Jays, Twins, TSN, tomorrow. I am the Rocky Mountains. My wisdom runs deep to every rock and every pebble. What advice do I have for a happy life? Avoid elevators. Wear clean underwear. Don't be afraid to ask for directions. Zig when they zag. Body should always be warm. And beer, beer should always be cold. Introducing Bosch Platinum Plus 4. Four electrodes. Pure platinum. Take your engine to a higher power. New Bosch Platinum Plus 4. Sports Desk. 
Brought to you by Coors Light, the call of the Rockies, and by Bosch Platinum Plus 4, the most advanced spark plug you can buy. NHL news and the Vancouver Canucks have signed Marcus Naslin to a new deal reported to be worth 7.2 million bucks over the next three years. Naslin led the Canucks with 36 goals and 30 helpers last season. Marcus Naslin. Marcus came in I think at a reasonable number uh, you know, given what he has done in the past and uh, he didn't ask for numbers that were you know uh, so far ahead of, uh, of where he is as a player. He came in right around uh, other guys with similar accomplishments and uh, uh, similar numbers, and we felt it was an appropriate deal and it was the right time to sign him. In Chicago, the Blackhawks have signed goalie Jocelyn Tebow to a multi-year deal. After coming over from the Habs last season, Tebow picked up 21 wins, four shutouts, becoming the fifth goalie in NHL history to win his 100th career game before the age of 25. The Hawks also signed Jamie Allison. He came over from Calgary last October, scored two goals and two assists, but he was sidelined for 23 games with a broken wrist. And the Hawks were a busy bunch. They also announced the signing of defenseman Brad Brown. He recorded a goal and eight assists last season. And still with hockey, Mario Lemieux is one rubber stamp away from becoming the owner of the Pittsburgh Penguins. On Wednesday, the NHL Board of Governors approved the sale of the team to its greatest ever player. All that remains for Mario is approval from a bankruptcy court on Thursday. I'm certainly very excited about having the opportunity to, uh, to come back to the game uh, after a couple years. And uh, this is really a dream uh, come through. Um, after these last 10 months of working hard on this deal and uh, trying to keep the Penguins in Pittsburgh. And, uh, you know, I'm very excited about the opportunity. Uh, there's so many elements uh, throughout uh, um, uh, the life of, of this deal that uh, have been difficult uh, with investors, uh, um, with all the parties involved, with the banks, senior lenders, uh, uh, SMG, Fox. So there was a lot of moving targets. Uh, uh, on a daily basis, and um, um, that's what made uh, this process very difficult, uh, especially down the stretch. And uh, I'm just glad that uh, we were finally able to uh, to put everything together over the last couple of days, uh, and even this morning we had some things to be resolved, which uh, were resolved uh, early this morning and late last night. And uh, you know we're ready to uh, to go forward now. Last season, Eric Lindros had his lung punctured and the wind went right out of the Flyers' postseason. Now it's being reported that Lindros injured his back while working out last week. This coming just days before the start of training camp. I'm not deeply worried about it. Uh, I've been, uh, I saw Bodison yesterday with, uh, with Bartolozzi and, uh, you know, I've been uh, seeing the, the Leaf trainer uh, and the Leaf doctors uh, uh, in Toronto uh, last week. So. They all have uh, the same thoughts in mind, and uh, it's basically just rest and uh, bring down the inflammation and uh, be able to go. To tennis in our Movado U.S. Open report, Tuesday the Open was rocked on the men's side of the bracket as both Pete Sampras and Patrick Rafter had to withdraw due to injuries. Things have been a little more predictable on the women's side, however. Wednesday, the number one seed, Martina Hingis, took on Sarah Pitkowski. These two have met one time before. Hingis won it easily 6-2, 6-1. In the first set of this match, Pitkowski does get Hingis running around a little bit here before the Swiss miss finally puts her away at the net. And Hingis takes the first set 6-1. Second set, match point, Pitkowski's shot is going to sail long, and Hingis takes the match easily, 6-1, 6-1. I kind of feel very confident today playing her. I haven't played her in a long time, but it kind of feels pretty good. Like I used to play, you know, Lindsay or um, Venus, Serena. They're all big girls, and there's all of a sudden someone shorter on the other side of me, so I feel pretty strong. <laughs> Well, speaking of Venus, the third seed taken on so Anne Gail Sado of France. First set, 5-3 Williams, with Sado trying to hold serve, and she blasts a nice forehand winner right past Williams to make it 5-4. However, Venus bounces back on serve. She makes a strong backhand return. Sado can't handle it, and Williams takes the first set 6-4 with sister Serena watching every point. Second set, Williams up 4-2, and she forces Sado wide. 
crazy about this funky uh, camera they're using here. So we go to match point. Sado is going to hit this one long, and Venus Williams advances, winning the match in straight sets, 6-4, 6-3. Like I said, pretty predictable on the women's side. There you can see no upsets to tell you about. And as for Hingis, she improves her record at the U.S. Open to 22-3 and all time. On we go now to the men, unseated Juan Carlos Ferrero taking on the loyal British subject, Greg Rosetsky. The first set, Ferrero surprising the ninth seed, up 5-4, comes to the net and puts away the smash. He takes the first set, 6-4, second set, Rosetsky takes control, pulls Ferrero into the net and then hits the touch volley into the open court to win the set. Then Rosetsky does it again, this time chips and charges and hits a nice backhand drop volley at the net. Rosetsky wins it in four sets onto the third seat of Genny Kafelnikov facing his Russian comrade Max Mirny. The first set Mirny takes Kafelnikov to a seventh game but Kafelnikov prevails hitting the backhand winner. After cruising to a 6-1 victory in the second, Kafelnikov in command. He hits a cross-court winner. Evgeny Kafelnikov moves, moves on as he takes it in four sets. Thomas Haas, also a winner. He unloaded on Thomas Enkvist by pounding out 44 winners. And just a reminder that our coverage of the U.S. Open continues on Thursday as Andre Agassi will be on center court. It begins at 11 a.m. Eastern time. That is 8 a.m. Pacific time. All right, we have to take a short break. Still to come, the Braves try to surprise the Reds in the National League. And we preview the Air Canada Championship. Does Mike Weir have the right stuff? They've done it. They've done, gone, and done it. Now there's a slicker, thicker, more hip, more hop, more happening new TV guide. Check it out. Viewing by the day, editor's picks of the week, even a weekly family viewing column. Couldn't leave well enough alone. I don't know how they've done it, but they've done, gone, and done it. And the cover stays put. Perfect binding. The new TV guide. I can love again. So I finally get to see your place. Yeah, this is uh, it. It's interesting. <laughs> hey, you want to go out for pizza? Can't they deliver? I mean, can't we stay in? Okay. Right here and I'll... In goes McCain Rising Crest Pizza. The crust rises up crispy and tender. Excuse me? Nothing. It's loaded with toppings. It's good. Yeah. It's really good. Mm -hmm. It's fast, too. Mm -hmm. They always deliver to your back door. <laughs> McCain Rising Crust Pizza. Who can tell it from takeout? Marry me. Okay. <laughs>